Hi friends, Dr. Pepe speaking. Welcome to the webinar number four about basic Shays interpretation. Let's start by going to the first uh, case. It's a PA radiograph of a 58 year old woman with cough and fever. And although it looks apparently normal, it is not. And your first question is the chest normal or abnormal? And I say it I said it is not normal. I'm offering you four possibilities. Where is the lesion? It is in the upper zone, it is in the middle zone, or it is in the lower zone. And of course, if you don't see it, say so. Okay, now you can stop the presentation at home. Look carefully, looking for the abnormality. And when you are ready, come back to the presentation. Okay, we are back. And the abnormality is here. This ill-defined opacity behind the right hemidiaphragm. That has to be seen. I will see it much better in the lateral view, where it is in the right lower low. And of course, with the clinical history of cough and fever, the lady, the patient, has a right lower low pneumonia visible behind the diaphragm in the PA view. This case is shown to talk about the last zone of the chest that we haven't studied, the lower zone. That is a large space and can be separated into two spaces, one above and another one below the diaphragm. The one below the diaphragm is important because usually we don't look under the diaphragms in the chest X-ray and we can find important pathology there. Let's look at this case, for example. This is a pre-op film for brain tumor in a 64-year-old man. And as preoperative films come, they took only a PHS film. And apparently, at the first glance, looks normal. There is a, some abnormalities, some plate-like atelectasis here, but at that most people will, will call this chest normal. It said that we had to look under the diaphragms. And here, under the right diaphragm, we see a rounded shadow. We see only the upper portion, but this is abnormal and should be seen. And we see it if we look, as I said, under the diaphragm. Well, we don't know where it is, but I know it is an abnormality, and we are supposed to take a lateral view. And when we take a lateral view, what do we see? We see a large mass in the right lower lobe hidden behind the diaphragm in the posterior costophrenic sinus. A CT was done, and we see a large necrotic tumor in the right, in the right lung in the same place as we saw it in the lateral view, and it happens to be a tumor. And of course, the final diagnosis was changed to carcinoma of the lung with the solitary brain metastasis that was eventually proved. And so in this case, just to show the importance of looking under the diaphragms and how it can change the management of cases. Of course, when we look on the diaphragm, not everything is going to be in the lower lobes. We may find abdominal abnormalities as well. Usually we have to look for two things that are very reliable and very easy to find. One, calcifications, and the other one, abnormal air. These two cases, these two radiographs, are examples of abnormal calcification. In this particular patient, we see a calcified nodule or something in the left upper quadrant. And we do a come down view in the abdominal in the abdominal film. We see that this is a, a large renal stone in the left kidney. In the other case, we see a different finding, a curvilinear calcification in the left upper quadrant, since the spleen is here, 
and the calcification is curvilinear, we think that this is a splenic cyst, and CT confirms a splenic cyst, a plain, a, a plain cyst in the in the left uh, in, in, sorry in the left arrow quadrant in the spleen. Okay, so that's the importance of looking at the abdominal part of the infradiaphragmatic portion. The other thing to head to look for is abnormal air under diaphragm. This is a lady, a 53-year-old woman with carcinoma of the breast and high fever. I, I emphasize that because what we see is a air fluid level under the right hemidiaphragm. And with the high fever, we had to we had to suspect an infectious process. We had to do a CT. And in this CT, we see a very nice uh, liver abscess in the left uh, left uh, lobe of the liver. This uh, discovered because it was in the brain film. Uh, notice that this is not a suphrenic abscess because there is no repercussion in the pleura in the costophrenic sinus. Uh, incidentally, this case is courtesy of Dr. Matthias Meisnitzer. The importance of looking under the diaphragm and, and the abnormal air is evidenced by this case, which uh, is a rare uh, disease, but is still demonstrable by chest X-ray. This is a case I saw four years ago. It's a 45-year-old man, asymptomatic. And the first thing that's call, that calls our attention, attention is a large uh, acidos arch, which is abnormal. But the important finding is under the diaphragm. We see again an air free level under the right hemidiaphragm. Patient doesn't have any fever, is asymptomatic, and another thing is that it has no air in the fornix on the right side on the left side, I'm sorry. So what we are looking here is the stomach on the right side. At that time, I didn't know this condition, which is rare, apparently very rare, that it was called levocardia with abdominal malrotation. It's a congenital disease that it is characterized by the chest uh, viscera being in normal position, the heart in the left, the aorta on the left, but the viscera in the abdomen are rotated 180 degrees. So everything is inverse. We have the liver on the left side, we have the stomach on the right side, we have polysplenia, which is typical of this condition, and this is an abnormality that apparently is very rare, but in the last five years we have discovered five cases in Barcelona alone, in two large hospitals. So it should be very rare if we, we, we have seen five cases in five years in a single city. And the important thing is it can be discovered just by looking at a check ray. This is very typical. All of them have a large, uh, uh, or they, I'm sorry, they are, they are uh, sorry, the large acidos arch, secondary to interruption of the vena cava, of the inferior vena cava and acid continuation. And you can make the diagnosis by that and by discovering the, the fornix with air on the right side. So that's, that uh, underscores the importance of looking under the diaphragm. So for this part, remember, in the subphrenic area, look for pulmonary opacities. You can see that because they are seen as uh, faint opacities outlined by air. And for that reason, you know they are in the lower lobes. Also look for abdominal calcification, can give you a tip of uh, granulomas in the viscera or, or cysts, and also abnormal abdominal air, pneumoperitoneum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, remember, the important thing is look at the suprenic area, because more often than not, you may, may find some abnormality. Okay, now let's go to case number two. This is a PHS film in a 67-year-old man with pain in the back. He was operated on five years ago for laryngeal carcinoma, and it was uh, normal until now. 
Again, look at the case and decide where the abnormality is. It is below the diaphragm, it is in the hard shadow, it is in the cost of phrenic angle, or if you are honest, you say, I don't see it. But if you, you take your time at home, I'm sure you will see the abnormality. Okay, you stop the presentation now and come back when you are ready. Back to the presentation, the abnormality is in the hard shadow. So the correct answer is number two. Why? Because we see a large opacity here behind the hard shadow that if you look at it, it's difficult to see, but when you, you realize that this is abnormal, then it's very obvious. Now we are going to see what a hard shadow looks in previous film. One year earlier, you see a normal hard shadow, normal in size, but also behind the heart. See this, you have, you see the normal vascularity and the right side has the same opacity than the left side. Okay, that is a normal appearance of the, the hard shadow. Here, the right side is uh, less opaque and here is more opaque. Of course, the next uh, step is doing a CT, but we have something even more useful. It's a lateral chest X-ray. When we do a lateral chest X-ray, now we see the reason for the opacity. It's a large mass in the back, extra pulmonary mass, that in the CT, see the size of it, and also that is uh, invading the posterior wall is uh, significantly significantly big, and it was not present one year before. And of course, unfortunately, that was demonstrated to be a metastasis from carcinoma of the larynx. Why show in this case? Because usually when we look at the chest film, we are um, used to look at the size of the heart, we look at the contour to see if there are any pumps, but we forget to look behind the, the heart, especially the left heart. Look at this case, 53-year-old man with cough and malaise, and probably has some abnormality here, some bronchiectasis in the right middle lobe. But if we look behind the left heart shadow, what we see, we see a large nodule over there that probably was not the cause of the symptoms. But the important thing is we have discovered it and now we can look for it and do a CT. There it is, irregular, looks malignant by the appearance and looks even more malignant in the PET CT. It's a high uptake and it was proven to be a carcinoma of the lung. Unfortunately for this patient, this carcinoma progressed uh, very rapidly and uh, killed the patient in two years time but it was discovered, as I said, looking behind the heart, the heart shadow. So one of the things we had to do in the heart, which dominates the lower part of the chest, is look behind and see if we see anything. This is another case, and the last case of this group, that they saw two weeks ago. 35-year-old woman with cough and fever, probably has a pneumonia. The lateral was not taken, don't know why, but Nothing on the right lung, but when we look at le the left lung, there is a ill-defined opacity there behind the heart that prompted us to take a lateral view, and there in the lateral view, we have a nice uh, left lower lung pneumonia, and the patient can be diagnosed because of this. It's a left lower lung pneumonia. Now, I want you, although I don't have any answers, uh, I don't have any questions for this, and I don't, I don't need your answers. Let me show you this case. 49-year-old woman is a pre-op for lumbar hernia. This film was taken in 2011. And again, the chest looks apparently normal. At the first glance, it looks normal, and it was read as normal at that time. Now, we look at the, behind the left heart, nothing there, normal vessels. But look at the right side. The right side is more opaque than the left. That is abnormal. 
But the most important thing is that we have a double contour. See, that's the contour of the heart. And there is a second contour there overlapping the area, see? This is unnormal. And this tiny finding or this small finding is important because it's uh, relevant and indicates that there is a mediastinal mass here behind the heart, which is visible only because it, it, there is a double contour. The, of course, the, the red was not, well, the chest was red as normal, as I said. Nothing was done. 2014, the patient came back again. The same finding, again, overlook. Again, normal chest, red by the radiologist. And again, a double contour. Look, the line there and the second line over there. It's a subtle finding, but, but very obvious when you look for it. Okay. The patient came back finally in 2016, and this time the double contour was obvious and was detected. We had one contour there, and one over there. At this time, the CT, I'm sorry, a lateral film was taken, and you can see a large mass over there. That no CT was done. Uh, we wanted to do the CT, but the patient refused because the, the mass was obviously benign because it hasn't changed in the peer review for five years. So we explained that to the, pa the patient and he refused to be to have a CT done. So we suspect there was a mediastinal duplication cyst and uh, we haven't seen the patient since. But I'm showing this case to stress the importance to looking at the right side of the heart to detect a double contour. Going to show you a couple more cases. This is another pre-op film for ankle trauma in a 47-year-old woman, asymptomatic as far as uh, uh, we, we know. And again, normal left heart, but abnormal right heart, double contour, contour of the heart. And there is a second contour, which indicates a mass over there. This time, of course, we did the CT. And there, there is a solid mass adjacent to the esophagus. The most likely diagnosis of probably a spindle cell tumor of the of the of the esophagus of the esophagus, but she was operated on and happened to be a gist of the esophagus, gastrointestinal, a stromal tumor of the esophagus, which you know is potentially malignant. Discovered because there was a double contour in the pre-op film. Less fortunate was this boy seven-year-old boy who has a history of pneumonia in two consecutive years. The first, uh, the first radiograph was taken in 2012. Uh, you can see the pneumonia here on the left lower lobe that was red, was identified. But the radiologist that look at the film forgot or no, overlooked to see a double contour on the right side. This is a contour of the heart, and this is a contour extra. It was not seen and it was not reported. One year later, he came with another pneumonia in the left lower lobe. See, there is a density, is opacity behind the, the, the left heart. On the right side, contour of the heart and a double contour, now more evident on the right side, indicating that there is a mass here that is growing. Again, it was not red. And finally, the boy came 2016 with a very large tumor, now very obvious. Now we, you, we see the double contour, one contour and another. And MRI was done, of course, and many other, many other tens, tests, and was finally diagnosed of neuroblastoma, which should have been diagnosed five years earlier if we have detected the double contour on the right side. So to summarize, remember, in the cardiac area, we are going to look at the size of the heart. You are going to look at the periphery for bumps, but don't forget to look for opacities behind the left heart. And especially don't forget to look for double contour on the right heart. Okay, that's very important to remember because you, otherwise you, you, might, you may be sorry that you, you didn't make the diagnosis as in the, in the body that I presented. 
Let's go to case number three. This is a 73-year-old patient. We suspected aortic dissection. Again, look at the at the radiograph and think the answers that I am offering you. Where is the abnormality? Is below the diaphragm? Is in the hard shadow? Or it is in the costophrenic angles? Or you cannot see it. Again, stop the presentation. Look at it. Look at the film at your leisure and decide what the, what the, which answer is the correct one and come back when you are ready. Okay, we are back. And now the abnormality is very easy to see if you forget about the clinical history. Of course, the patient may have an aortic dissection, has an elongated aorta. We don't know, we had to do a enhanced CT, but there is another abnormality. There is a nodule here in the right costophrenic angle, which can better be seen in the come down view. It's a come down view of the right costophrenic angle. And now this time you can see this nodule over there, which obviously was missed. And it was seen in the CT to study the, the dissection. The patient has you know, a, obviously a dissection in this uh, in this uh, film is uh, clearly seen, but the nodule that was missed was seen in the right costophrenic angle. Nodule was uh, very low in density. It was only 40, 42 Hounsfield units after the injection of contrast. So because the patient has a dissection and because the nodule was benign, apparently benign, it was decided to, to wait and follow it up. And after two years of follow or following up the nodule, he had no change. So that confirms that that the nodule is benign and should be uh, uh, operated on. Why I'm showing you this case? Because uh, we have three important areas in the lower part of the chest. We talk about the infradiaphragmatic area. We talk about the heart, which is in the middle and dominates the lower part. But also we have the extreme, the costophrenic angles. And the costophrenic angles, you know how they how they look, the normal ones, and you have to investigate then for abnormality. And sometimes we forget to look at them. In this case, we didn't because we saw the abnormality in the left costophrenic angle, where there is a small meniscus, which is very is tiny and can be overlooked, especially because the, the shadow of the breast over there. But in the case, in this particular case, it has a small amount of fluid. This lady had the carcinoma of the ovary, the ovary. The left pleural space was studied and malignant cells were found there. So this tiny finding or this, this small finding, or this tiny amount of or fluid changed the stage, staging of the, of the disease. So detecting abnormalities in the costophrenic angles is important, may be important, and they should be looked in, very, in every patient. There are four important changes or changes that you have to look for in the costophrenic angles. One, lung nodules, as we saw in the previous case. This is another patient with a nodule barely visible in the left costophrenic angles, but with sort of vessels going into it. The CT was done. What the patient has was a AV malformation lodge in the left costophrenic angle with the afferent and the efferent vessels. The other thing we are going to see, and this is the most common finding, is free fluid with a concave meniscus that is typical of this condition. Sometimes we are going to see a scarring, and this, in my experience, is very typical. You see a sort of oblique straight diaphragm with blunting of the angle. Thus, it's very typical, and, and proven otherwise, it's very typical of a old process and scarring, either secondary to infection or pulmonary embolism or previous pneumothorax, et cetera, et cetera. And you can find that, uh, you can com confirm it very easily comparing with previous film. And the last uh, finding is this so-called Hampton hump, in which you have a little bit of fluid 
and then convexity instead of concave is convexity of the cost of friendly angle which is irregular indicating that there is an pulmonary component there this is very suggestive of pulmonary infarction and in inadequate uh, clinical setting should be investigated with the uh, with the enhanced ct i'm going to show you a case this is a patient that came at 3 a.m. a night with this chest X-ray. It was suspected clinically of pulmonary embolism. ACT was done, enhanced CT was done, and the resident on call called it normal, didn't see pulmonary embolism. The next day, the chest X-ray was uh, seen, and the Hampton ham there made us think that the patient had the pulmonary embolism. The CT was reviewed and the revision show a large thrombus in the inferior artery of the right lower lung that was missed by the resident. And that is a 3 a.m. diagnosis, of course, of course. And again, in the coronal reconstruction, you can see the thrombus there in the artery that was missed in the initial reading and was found because the Hampton ham was found in the chest X-ray. So don't disregard the importance of, of chest radiograph in pulmonary embolus. Remember, the cost of phrenic angles should be looked in every, every examination. The most important thing or the most common thing is going to be a meniscus concave for free fluid. You can see a straight uh, blunting, secondary to scarring. See the Hampton ham and if the clinical conditions are correct, if the patient has a elevated D-dimer or the clinical impression is very high, then do an enhanced CT. And also occasionally you are going to see there occult pulmonary nodules, some of them may be malignant. And finally, I want to show you the case number four. It's a 56 year old man, asymptomatic, and I'm not going to give you options, just uh, think where is the abnormality? Okay, look at the chest, look at it, all areas, and decide where the abnormality is. Stop the presentation, and I'll be back when you return. Okay, I imagine all of you, or, or I hopefully most of you, have seen that the abnormality is in the right cardiophrenic angle. And when we had a cone down view, we see a sort of a nodule with calcifications, very coarse calcifications inside. And when we see that, of course, we have a diagnosis in mind that is probably a pulmonary hamartoma with obesity, and we confirm the diagnosis. This is a hamartoma of the lung, and you can see the typical nodule with a popcorn calcification. Why I'm showing this case? Because I want to digress for a few minutes about the right cardiophrenic angle. The right cardiophrenic angle, as you all know, is usually occupied by the fat pad, the cardiac fat pad, which has a, see, you see it there, you see another patient, has a typical appearance. Everybody sees it, nobody pays any attention, and uh, it's a, is a very common occurrence. But what I want to transmit is that the fat pad is not always a fat pad. Of course, it's a most common happening there, the most common abnormality happening there. But if you have any clinical suspicion or the patient has any problem or should you think it is abnormal, you have to do a CT. Because when you do a CT, most of the time you are going to find the typical fat pad there. But sometimes you are going to find other diseases, such as a pericardial cyst. There you have pericardial cyst. See, in the brain film has the same appearance. You cannot separate fat density from fluid density, but the CT is necessary to separate both of them. Both are, are benign diseases, but uh, there are four densities that you are going to see of, uh, in CT that separate four different processes at the right cardiophrenic angle. The first is the fat pad. The second one is the Morgani hernia. 
is fat coming arising from the from the abdomen through a hiatus in the in the diaphragm as you see over here diaphragm this is a hiatus and you can see the fat and the vessels going through the hiatus in the diaphragm the third density or the same finding that you're going to see is a pericardial disease which is not uncommon over there it's a benign disease it's not uh, remarkable but it's necessary to make the diagnosis and the last thing that you're going to see is a solid mass sometimes you are going to see a solid mass in the cardiophrenic angle and this is important because the majority of solid masses that you find over there are going to see lymphadenopathies secondary to metastatic disease or sometimes to lymphomas and the like and occasionally very rarely and this is important if you are taking an examination you are going to find thymomas or thymic tumors in the cardiophrenic angle why because the thymomas originate in the upper mediastinum but many times slide down through the mediastinal planes and end up in the cardiophrenic angles either the right or the left one okay so you have to know that and as i say if you are taking an examination perhaps you can make a brilliant diagnosis and impress your examiner but your examiner was saying that this patient may have a thymoma in the lower mm -hmm. mediastinum okay remember the point of this last case is that to determine the etiology of masses in the right cardiophrenic angle, you need a CT. If you have any clinical suspicion and the patient is not, is, is not asymptomatic, then do a CT to discover what is there in the right cardiophrenic angle. Okay, we are finishing now. Let's look at the lower mediastinum I'm sorry, lower mediastinum, no, lower, lower chest. I put mediastinum, that's my error. Lower chest, basic shell list. Remember, infra are supra diaphragmatic. Look for above the diaphragm, looks for disease behind the left heart. Look for a double contour of the right heart. Also look at the cardiophrenic angle and look especially to the costophrenic angles. And below the diaphragm, look for pulmonary opacities. Remember that the lower log, lobes come very low, they come almost to this area. So when you are looking here in the infradiaphragmatic region, uh, inframatic region, it's not only abdominal viscera, it's also part of the lower lungs. Look for pulmonary opacities, that you will see because they are surrounded by air and also look for abdominal calcification and also look for abnormal abdominal air. Okay, this is all. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation and I will wait for you for the next webinar. Thank you very much. <laughs>